This week we are talking about introductions, and introductions achieve three things. First, they hook or grab the reader's attention, and there are a number of ways that a writer can do this. Second, they provide a little bit of background information on the topic or context for the topic that you are writing about. Third, they prepare the reader for and deliver a thesis statement which is a sentence or two that communicates to the reader what the essay is going to be about. Now, writers will organize their introductions in a number of ways. This is sort of like one of your opportunities to be really creative in a traditional academic essay is your introduction and your conclusion. So one of the ways that a writer might Begin an, in, uh, begin an introduction is what, what we call the definition example pattern. And we've already talked about Naomi Klein's essay, The Change Within. We're going to be just revisiting the first couple of paragraphs. So in Klein's The Change Within, she begins the first two paragraphs with a long definition example pattern. That is her hook in the essay. I'm going to go ahead and read it just to remind us that it's there or pause the video and read it on your own. But it begins, this is a story about bad timing. One of the most disturbing ways that climate change is already playing out is through what ecologists call mismatch or mistiming. This is the process whereby warming causes animals to fall out of step with a critical food source, particularly at breeding times, when a failure to find enough food can lead to rapid population losses. There's our definition. Now here comes the examples. The migratory pattern of many songbird species, for instance, have evolved over millennia, so that eggs hatch precisely when food sources, such as caterpillars, are at their most abundant, providing parents with ample nourishment for their hungry young. But because spring now often arrives early, the caterpillars are hatching earlier too, which means that in some areas they are less plentiful when the chicks hatch, threatening a number of health and fertility impacts. Similarly, in West Greenland, caribou are arriving at calving grounds only to find themselves out of sync with the forage plants they've relied on for thousands of years, now growing earlier thanks to rising temperatures. That is leaving female caribou with less energy for lactation, reproduction, and feeding their young, a mismatch that has been linked to a sharp decrease in calf births and survival rates. Scientists are studying cases of climate-related mistiming among dozens of species, from arctic terns to pied flycatchers, but there is one important species they are missing, us. So I'm going to pause there. <clears throat> In this case, the definition pa example pattern does two things. One, it makes the reader comfortable with a term that he or she may not be comfortable with, mismatch or mistiming. We get that definition, and then we get two very detailed examples and two very just note, you know, name drop, just quick mention examples um, that help prepare the reader to better understand these definitions that the rest of the essay is going to be built on. The second thing is it's just interesting. It's, it's uh, good writing, and it helps to pull the reader in and, and keep their attention. The next thing that we'll notice in Naomi Klein's essay is after our hook, she begins to build in some background information that are going to prepare us to better understand her thesis. Um, she writes, we too, homo sapiens, we too are suffering from a terrible case of climate-related mistiming, albeit a cultural historical rather than a biological sense. Our problem is that the climate crisis hatched in our laps at a moment in history when the political and social conditions were uniquely hostile to the problem of this nature and magnitude, that moment being the tail end of the go-go 80s, the blast-off point for a crusade and spread of deregulated capitalism around the world. This is the piece where she is able to provide the background information necessary for us to anticipate and appreciate her thesis. She would not have been able to put her thesis statement right underneath her hook because there's something missing between those two things. So you can think about this middle section as like a bridge, but also it helps provide background information or context. Finally, we arrive at the thesis. The thesis sentence reads, 
Climate change is a collective problem demanding collective action, the likes of which humanity has never actually accomplished. Yet it entered mainstream consciousness in the midst of an ideological war being waged on the very idea of the collective sphere. This is what the rest of the essay is going to argue or explain. Essentially, what Naomi Klein is saying is that we now understand that climate change is a real issue, one that is going to require collective response. What she's getting at is this idea, collective response is that you have to see your own life, your own struggle, you, the things that impact you as an individual are linked up with the struggles that other people and other families face. That's the idea of collectivity. You understand yourself as part of a larger group. And she said that climate change, which requires this group understanding, came into mainstream consciousness at the same time that there was an ideological war. When she says ideological war, what she means is a war of ideas. And the war of ideas was that it was... Uh, really beginning in the 80s and, and, and onward, there's this shift in thinking that encourages people to think about themselves not as part of a collective, but as individuals, right? I'm going to worry about only myself, only my family, not these other people who are out there. And so Klein is saying that those two things create a mistiming, and she's going to argue and explain that through the rest of her essay. I would encourage you to reread this introduction. I think it's an excellent example. You might choose to imitate it in your own essay about progress for this class.